even though Deion Sanders went to Florida State, played for Florida State, and is a Florida guy, he does not think they were snubbed by the college football playoff committee. You are Locked On Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked on Buffs. I am your host, Kevin Borber. Today's episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. We are also brought to you by the Locked on Podcast Network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen today and every day. We are talking about the college football playoff the committee, did they get it right? Did they get it wrong? Uh, Deion Sanders, Coach Prime weighed in. Um, he was interviewed by 24-7 Sports, Dan Lebitard today, doing a little media circuit, um, as one Coach Prime does. And he was asked about Florida State, obviously his alma mater. Um, that's where people thought he would end up coaching had Mike Norvell been fired. Um, but obviously Mike Norvell is far from getting fired now. And so he was asked about it. And he took a shocking stance. I think. Most people probably expected him to be like, yeah, Florida State got snubbed. That's my alma mater. Like, what What are we doing? And that's not what we got. So this is what he told 24-7 Sports. It's no way that you're going to leave Coach Saban and Alabama out of the playoff and Georgia. No, you're not going to leave Georgia and Alabama out. It ain't no playoff if you do that. And then he prays Mike Norvell. He says, I don't know how I would have handled that. I think Coach Norvell did a wonderful job articulating himself, speaking the truth. And, and the players supporting him as well. That's a tough one, man. I would love to be in that situation. Unfortunately, we're not. But we plan on being in that situation. But that's a tough one. They, they're going to always go with the business. People think it's just football. But you got to understand this is a business as well. And I wanted to weigh in. I wanted to talk about the playoff. I think he's right in the sense that it's a business. As soon as Alabama beat Georgia, part of me was like, they might put both Alabama and Georgia in the playoff. Like, Put, I thought it was going to be Michigan, Washington, Georgia, Alabama for a second. And then Texas obviously won convincingly. So I was like, okay, Texas has to be in there. And so I was a little wear, weary, weary, weary on where the playoff committee would go. I assumed Florida State was out. I just did. I figured I knew the quarterback thing was going to come back to haunt them. They had been laying the groundwork. Uh, same thing with the ESPN talking heads. They had been laying the groundwork for weeks. Um, ever since Jordan Travis went down, talking about the playoff, they consistently said it is the four best teams, not the four most deserving. And that was hinting at the fact that Florida State is a deserving team. I totally agree. They deserve to be there. But they are right now not one of the four best teams. I don't think they're one of the four best teams. I think they have a really good defense. And this is without Jordan Travis. With Jordan Travis, fourth best team for sure. Without Jordan Travis, they are not the same offensive team. Um, Brock Lynn, he's a freshman. I mean, he did his best. It just wasn't, they obviously won the ACC. So it was enough to get them to win, but it wasn't enough to pass the eye test for the committee. Tay Rodemaker, or Rodemaker, however you say his last name, he, who knows if he'd be back. I'd assume he'd be back from concussion protocol, um, by January, but again, that's not for me to decide. So, um, I thought that was interesting. But I think the one thing that everybody's missing in the portal is everybody or in the portal um, in the playoff discussions is everybody saying the games didn't matter. The games didn't matter. I think while the playoff committee, this is their most controversial selection. And obviously they've never had a selection be this controversial because it's usually worked out, but this was bound to happen. Eventually there's four spots, there's five power conferences. So realistically every year, a power five conference champion gets left out. It is what it is. Last year, it was Kansas State. They got left out. Um, obviously, they won the Big 12 and TCU got in. Um, I remember, I think it was the first year or maybe the second year around then, um, Penn State won the Big 10 and didn't get in. Um, TCU and Baylor, they tied for the Big 12 championship one year. Neither of them got in because they didn't have a Big 12 championship at that time. And so every, every year, someone was bound to get left out. That's how it works. Um, people are saying, oh, why play the games if the games don't matter? I see both sides and I'm going to play a devil's advocate right here, which is annoying to some, but it's kind of what I got to do here. Florida state played the games and did they win the games? Yes. Did they win the games in convincing fashion and look like they were one of the best four teams? No. And so I think that's part of the reason. And then the other part where it's like, ah, oh, they should have got in is 
they they won. It, I think it shows that because in past years when a conference champion doesn't get in, like Utah's never gotten in and they won the Pac-12 title uh, two years in a row, but they didn't have the record. They didn't have the resume. Florida State had the resume, and I think it's unfortunate that they're holding one player, um, like the the happenings to one player. Sorry, sorry, my contact is messing up right now. Excuse my eye scratching. <laughs> they're holding one player's injury against the whole team, and I think obviously with the month to prepare, maybe things could be different for Tate or Brock or whoever would be starting at quarterback for them. But it's unfortunate, and I think it's going to be. I think for one, it's going to start another wave of realignment, which I don't understand because next year you win your conference title, you're in no matter what. It just depends on seeding at that point, but you win and you're in. And so now everybody's talking about, oh, well, now Florida State needs to leave the ACC. Florida State goes to the SEC, and I think it's the same thing with USC, UCLA, Oregon, Washington. Um, These programs that are leaving their conference to go to the SEC or the Big Ten they ain't all going to make it. It's going to be the craziest form of cannibalism we've ever seen. And people are going to go be like, ah, we're never going to make it here. And we're going to go back to conferences in five years or six years, whatever, when people are like, ah, the money is great, but I don't like I don't like not being able to compete. And people can say, shut up and take the check and just play the games and deal with the results. And that's fine. But if you're, prog- if you're a mid-tier program, for instance, like think of a mid-tier program right now. Missouri, for example, in the SEC, they had a really good season this year. Um, and in years past, they haven't really been a predominant power by any means. But Missouri's done well. Uh, now you add Texas and Oklahoma, um, and things get a little more tricky. Um, other programs start trending up, and all of a sudden you find yourself in a very tough situation. Obviously, Missouri would have made the playoff this year because they're uh, ranked ninth. But it's just one of those things where it's like you think South Carolina is going to be contending for the playoff. You think uh, UCLA is going to contend for anything? No. It's it's all about money. And I think back to the playoff thing, people need to realize that this is an entertainment business. The college football playoff, we don't need the playoff show, <laughs> reveal show to be a, a three-hour, four-hour show. We don't need it to be a 30-minute show. They could literally just tweet it out and that'd be fine. But it's all about entertainment. Uh, I think while Florida State had some flaws and I think you could have made a case for them at the end of the day, it's about entertainment. It's about, oh, like I I think while Coach Prime is saying that you can't have it without Alabama or Nick Saban and people are like, oh, that doesn't mean it's the four best teams. It it never was going to be. It never was going to be the four best teams. We've had teams every year where it's like, oh, they they didn't make it because they had a loss or two. Um, but they could have, and it's never been about the four best teams. It's been about the teams that one look good and win enough and will kind of get those ratings. Like the same reason, because a lot of people are saying, and this is the worst example ever. If you talk about TCU and you say, that's why Florida state didn't get in. You need to bomb your bonk yourself on the face repeatedly until you realize it doesn't make sense. TCU beat Michigan. They honestly, we're blowing Michigan out of the water. That comparison holds no water, holds no weight here. Florida State has an unfortunate circumstance that prevented them from making it. Um, I think, realistically, Alabama beating Georgia made things a lot more complicated. Uh, had Georgia won, they'd be in. Alabama would be out. Uh, I think then it would just turn into who would get in over Florida State or Texas. And I don't know if I, – I honestly don't know if there's a scenario where Florida State makes the playoff – um, as they currently stand right now, because they had been laying the groundwork for its dessert. It's the four best teams, not the four most deserving teams. And I think a lot of people are missing that point. Um, I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying the evidence was there. They were hinting at us for weeks now that it's the four best teams, not the four most deserving. And I think a lot of people are going to agree with or disagree with Deion Sanders on his take and be like, oh, it's just because he doesn't like Florida State anymore or whatever, blah, blah, blah. No, it's just, it is what it is. He's not saying anything that's wrong. He's just saying what a lot of people don't want to say, which is nothing new for for Coach Prime. (laughs) This episode of Locked on Bus is brought to you by our sponsors over at LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help to find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. I personally use LinkedIn, got my first job right out of college, connected with the hiring manager, looked at what they were expecting from their candidates, and I obviously fit the bill. 
got hired. It was a great experience. And there's no better way to find a job than LinkedIn. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. They have a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring, e hiring is easy, excuse me, when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, that process is intuitive, quick, and it's easy. They even launched a feature that helps you write the job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. We are talking about Colorado football. Locked. It's locked on bus, by the way. It's your team every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. Don't forget it. Never forget it. Um, Nick Williams, the Colorado defensive end coach. He is on the move. I don't know where he's on the move to because it was reported Syracuse and now it says um, it's uh, Coach Prime said Louisville today. Um, I think again, people are going to try to underplay what this loss means to Colorado. This is probably of the losses they've suffered this offseason. Let me just put it into perspective. I, I tweeted that. I'm going to go to my tweet real quick. It's a good tweet. Quality tweet. Or quality, quality X post as it is now called. Um, so Colorado in the past, we'll say month now, they've lost four star quarterback Antoine Hill, four star wide receiver Winston Watkins, uh, Winston Watkins, 2025, both of them, three star running back Jam Jamaris Wilder, 2025, three star quarterback Danny O'Neill, three star offense lineman Talon Chandler, 2024. Of the recruits, I would say the only one that really matters, Antoine Hill. I think they had a top quarterback, top five quarterback in the class. Perfect replacement for Shadur Sanders, and they're not going to get him. Um, well, I mean, they could, I guess, but it doesn't look likely now. Uh, he's obviously looking into other programs and looking at what other places had to offer. So, of the other ones, though, Winston Watkins, he had already flipped his, he already changed his mind a bunch of times. No, no shade to him. It's just young guy committing a year in advance. It's tough. Same thing with the running back uh, Wilder. Young guy committing a year in advance. Colorado will never have problems getting wide receivers and running backs, so I'm not worried about that. Antoine Hill, I think that's a big loss. I don't know if it'll come back to bite them. Who knows if they go into the portal next year? Who knows what they do? Then they lose Sean Lewis, the offensive coordinator to San Diego State, head coach. That was going to happen regardless. I think, and I've talked about this countless times, I think the way Deion Sanders handled the Sean Lewis situation, I think it was the wrong way to go about it. Um, I think he should have let Sean Lewis figure things out down the stretch or just finish the season out. Um, it kind of made Colorado look desperate and made them look like they were unorganized. And lo and behold, they had Jordan Seaton visiting that week against Oregon State when they were flipping things around. They had other visitors that week where it's like, oh, okay, Colorado's kind of off the off the rails right now. And I think I think realistically they could have just kept it going for four more games. I mean. It really didn't matter. In hindsight, they they didn't win a the game the rest of the season after the Arizona, Arizona State game. So Sean Lewis was doing a better job than Pat Shermer did. Obviously, Pat Shermer got the run game going a little bit more, but I think the offense and situational football was better with Sean Lewis. Either way, Sean Lewis was always going to leave for a head coaching job. Uh, that was all that to say. I think Deion Sanders handled it wrong, but Sean Lewis was always going to be a one-year rental. There was no doubt about it. He left Kent State, came to Colorado for a bigger platform, and he wanted to get a head coaching job. He got that. That was always the plan. That was always going to happen. So congrats to him. Tim Brewster left the um, Titans post to go work um, at Charlotte as a Titans coach there. I don't, I think losing Tim Brewster is like a, a tough thing for the culture. Um, he seemed like a very inspirational guy. Seemed like he always had the players rallying around him. The players were obviously, I don't say disappointed, but you could tell they all loved him. They all liked his, um, they all appreciated him. They all were tweeting at him and talking about how much they'll miss him and stuff. And it, it was just one of those things where it's like, ah, you hate to lose a culture building guy, especially with a team like Colorado who clearly had culture issues. And I think he could have helped build that culture. And you could say why they have culture issues when your coach is questioning what your identity is. And if you love football halfway through the season, it's not great. Let's just, I'll just leave it there. And then most recently they lose Nick Williams. Um, he tweeted on X the other day that he was leaving. Um, obviously, a lot of this happens. It's going to happen for Colorado frequently. Um, guys are going to come after uh, his coaching staff. They're going to come after his players if they think things are rocky. And losing Nick Williams is a 
probably the biggest deal of all of these departures. So in total, there's seven departures in the last month that I talked about. There could be another one. I don't remember. Um, seven. And I think he's the biggest one by far. Um, actually, eight. Excuse me. One, two, three. Yeah, eight. And I think he's the biggest one. He was their best recruiter. Uh, obviously, Charles Kelly is a great recruiter. But this is who he brought in this year. Cameron McKell, Brandon Davis Swain, um, Omar White, Eric Brantley. And then he also uh, brought in a Montre Bradford, Bradford, excuse me. Uh, he was the primary recruiter for five of Colorado's nine commits, not to mention um, Colorado's already kind of seen the ripple effect of his absence. They had a, um, a recruit cancel visit following his, the news that he stepped down. Um, and it's just one of those things where Colorado can't afford to lose um stuff like this like i mean it's not really their choice um four star edge rusher king joseph edwards announced that colorado was in his final three and he was going to make his decision two weeks but after williams stepped back or removed himself from the job edwards um other two schools are now viewed as the favorite and i think um so oh, this is what he said. Sorry, I was trying to find the comment. I was my laptop was up. He said Coach Williams is leaving CU. Here's my position. He's my position coach, and I didn't go on my official visit this weekend. I'm waiting to hear back so, um, from Deion Sanders. So obviously, it's one of those things where they couldn't really afford to lose him like that. I think that it's going to hurt them recruiting wise. And Colorado needs a big recruiting class this year, or a big transfer portal class, whatever it is. Um, I don't care. Whatever you, however you want to put it, they needed him. They needed him to round out this class. And if they don't get a replacement soon, and I'm pretty sure the replacement that a lot of people are talking about is Warren Sapp. Warren Sapp's a Hall of Famer. He's probably has a lot of knowledge passed down. He has never coached. He has never recruited. Until I see him doing either of those things, it's hard to be like, yeah, Warren Sapp's going to fix all these problems. Realistically, none of these kids were alive when Warren Sapp played. Um, they weren't alive when Coach Prime played, but they know him. Um Let's see his, let's see when Warren, I don't even know if I was alive when Warren Sapp played. Let's see. Oh, I was. Okay. He played until I was eight. Cool. I'm older than these kids, but I'm around the same age, a little bit older than these college kids. They have no recollection of him playing. They know the name. It's the same thing with Deion Sanders. Obviously, a lot of these guys, they know him. Deion Sanders was obviously in the public eye a lot longer, and we always knew about him because he's unheralded as the greatest athlete ever and stuff like that. So I knew about Deion. I watched his games. I watched his um baseball and football stuff on youtube like uh, i knew about him warren Sapp, though it's like i know he's a legend i don't think i've i've seen highlights don't think a lot of people have seen him play and so it's like do you think that name is going to be enough to get kids to be like you know what i trust him i don't know nick williams though was on the ground he was recruiting hard for the buffs and i think it's a it's an unfortunate loss and it's going to be one that could really hurt them um moving forward so i guess we'll just have to wait and see how things shake out this episode of Locked on Bus is also brought to you by our sponsors over at FanDuel. As the weather gets colder and the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel, right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options that include spread, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. We are back and we're talking about recruiting the transfer portal, the hoopla behind it. Okay, so I wanted to update you guys on who is kind of in and out for Colorado. They've lost two players. Let me make sure. Because the transfer portal is ongoing. It's pretty crazy right now. It's it's like a who's who of like transfer portaling. Um, like, obviously, you, you knew Colorado was going to be buyers, but you also knew that people were going to leave. And so, um, so far, these are the names that have left. Caleb uh, Faria, tight end. Um, he kind of made a hoopla. Um, didn't really play this year. Um, but everybody was like, oh, like legacy. One of those things. Marvin Ham, linebacker. He was a starter um, for Colorado at times, but he – Lost a spot, um, was kind of bumped out of the rotation. Um, Gerard uh, Christian like Likenchen, I forget how to say his last name. The left tackle, big dude, um, six foot nine, six foot eight, whatever he is. Um, expected, um, realistically, I think he was probably of 
their offensive line, I think he struggled the most. I would say he was probably, I don't want to say this is the worst one because that sounds aggressive, but he was probably the worst one. Um, he gave up a lot of sacks. Um, I'm pulling up his PFF grade right now. Um, I think I think the problem with this offensive line departure, because I also lost Van Wells, which I, I didn't love for Colorado because I thought he did fairly well. I think he had, a, of the offense linemen, I think he had the, the most um, potential or just like another year in the system would have helped. Um, but as for the left tackle that they lost, um, he kind of, he, he, where his name's not popping up actually. That's weird. Um, it's just one of those things where it was a tough situation for all these guys, because I think a lot of them were hopeful that they would, um, kind of get an opportunity to show, showcase their skill set and, they just didn't get that. Op- they kind of got that opportunity, but they didn't really um, take advantage of the opportunity, I guess you could say. We'll put it that way. Um, he was ranked as the 298th left ta- or tackle in the country. Um, pass block- blocking grade of 68, run blocking grade of 56. Um, it kind of was expected. you know. I think when Coach Prime, I won't say he goes out of his way to throw his offense line under the bus because he didn't really have to go out of his way. He was asked about it every single after every single game after Shadur Sanders was sacked infinity times um it's it's the craziest thing because it's like i understand why these guys want to leave you know they they were kind of the scapegoat but at the same time they did poorly um i think some of these guys realized that power five football probably isn't for them i expect them to land at fcs or group of five schools and that's okay you know they're still playing college football um but colorado needs reinforcements and i imagine that conversations were had where it's like hey i think it's time for you to skedaddle i imagine that's how it went down um and then they also lost anthony hankerson the running back um which also he was their i would say their most productive or consistent running back this year obviously that's not saying much with this how this uh rushing attack went um but colorado in the transfer portal um has not i mean guys entering the portal isn't shocking they need um i think they have it was they had like 13 spots open, 12 spots open um, prior to all these departures, and they need a lot of help. They need high school help. They need transfer portal help. So Coach Prime kind of has to go through the roster again and weed out the guys where it's like, hey, unfortunately, it didn't work out. And I think that's the hard part about his portal method because it's he's going to keep doing that until, until he takes recruiting seriously or uh, prioritizes it more. It's just going to be a constant like, okay, who didn't? live up to the standards of this year because I need you to get out so I can replace you. And yeah, and I think they have a lot of room for growth. I think it's going to be tough because now Van Wells is pretty much the only offense line where I was like, I think he should start next year. So now they need a new five. And I, I'm interested to see how that's going to pan out. Uh, I think they're in the mix for a few guys, but nonetheless, it's going to be an interesting um, interesting offseason for Colorado. Recruiting-wise, they have a big month. Um, obviously, the early signing days on the 20th, I told you about King Joseph. Um, they hosted a few offensive linemen. Um, they're trying to flip them. We're going to wait and see. I'm going to have our recruiting insider come on the show, and we'll talk about it more. I appreciate you guys for tuning in Locked on Buffs every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Kevin Borba. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. We're almost, almost at 4,000. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and a great start to your week.